Um, you, we hadn't invented that technology yet, but now it's out, so you can get it on uh, uh, eBay right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Victoria Robinson coming to you live from the Poppers here at New York City Comic Con. And I am speaking to, I think, the scariest, most deadly person that I've spoken to so far at this convention, the icon and superstar, Daniel Wu. Welcome! Hi, I'm not scary, I'm a nice guy. Uh, I watched you into the Badlands, <laughs> so I know. I know you could take me out if just, you wanted just to. Just don't turn that part of me on. <laughs> so, because I evoked it, I have to ask right. who's going to win in a fight, the Monkey King or Sonny? Oh, um, I would have to say Monkey King because he has uh, magical powers magical on powers. top of his martial arts skills, and Sonny's only got martial arts skills. <laughs> A little bit of energy, but I think Monkey King is going to top it. So with the mystical powers, is that tough when you're trying to execute a physical character to imagine beyond the scope of your human abilities? Well, it's interesting because he has kind of he has this weapon called the Jingu Bong as a staff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a staff that can change in size. So he stores it behind his ear mm -hmm. and it's like a toothpick. And then he can pull it out and it becomes a normal staff or it can become a gigantic staff. And so when we're filming it, there were various different staffs that we had to fight with. Mm -hmm. So you have to get used to that because different size staffs have different weights and blah, blah, blah. And so it was, it, it was challenging. It was very challenging to deal with different um, weapons of the same kind, you know what I mean? There's, they didn't have the budget for a magical staff? Um, you know, we hadn't invented that technology yet, but okay. now it's out, so you can get it on uh, uh, eBay right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Did you do a lot of your shooting alone in a bubble because you are in the fantastical realm? It is a little bit more sophisticated in COVID time? Oh, no, actually, you know, we did this kind of like old school, so I had prosthetic makeup on. Cool. Uh, three, four hours a day of that. Love that. Um, when we had, especially in episode four, when we have a, the whole episode is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So there's all these mystical creatures all over the place. I, I, I kind of liken it to that first scene in Star Wars when they walk into the, the bar. Uh, nice. Was, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's all this, these freaks around there and, <laughs> and they're having a great time. So that episode was fully in heaven and there was a kind of crazy scene like that. It was all analog. Everybody had prosthetic makeup on. Very little light CG work, mm -hmm. uh, but it was like old school. And that's what I really enjoyed about it because you could actually feel and understand how, how, how it felt. But the action stuff... Um, it was interesting because we did mix in CG with practical fighting, and so you'd have to like, you know, imagine that the staff would become big all of a sudden mm -hmm. and then small, and then we do little switch outs and stuff like that. Um, but it was it was fun and challenging, and that's what I liked about it working on it. So I'm assuming that you've seen more of the show than I have at this point. Do you think the Monkey King actually looks like you at all? Um, well, you see yourself in him. In the when I, okay, there's two looks for the Monkey King. Uh -huh. He's Earth look, which looks like an Amish version of myself. He's okay. got a, a beard, I call him. Real, real beard? Yeah. Fake beard? Uh, no, fake beard. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, um, um, you know, he has a beard and a little ponytail, and I call him Jacob. Um, but, um, <laughs> and then there's the heaven version, which is full monkey. We yeah. call him full monkey. And so it's the full prosthetic makeup with everything. And then there's the flashback monkey when he's younger. So there's a younger version. So I go through very several different iterations of him. And so I think in the full monkey regalia, it's kind of hard to see me. But in the earth version, you can see the, if I was Amish, that's what I'd look like. <laughs> If you call everybody English yes. as you end your yes. sentences. Yes, and uh, <laughs> rode my horse-drawn carriage every day to work. <laughs> so I asked this before. I'm going to ask it again. There's no wrong answer, even though the author's standing right over there. Did you read American Born Chinese before you joined the show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and that's actually why I did it, because my nephews years ago were reading it in school, for school. Cool. And so I picked, I was like, American-born Chinese, what is this? And I pick it up and I started looking at it and then I just got sucked in mm -hmm. and read the whole thing. And so when I realized they were making a live action version of it, I was super excited. And then when they asked me to play Monkey King and then I was like totally elated. I'd been asked to play Monkey King various times before in my career in Asia. Oh, really? But it was the more traditional Journey to the West story. And this one was different because it's Monkey King kind of as a father, as a more mature uh uh, fatherly character, 4,000 years older than the original Monkey King. And so there was a kind of a different bent on the character there that I really liked because it kind of related to my personal life. I'm a mm -hmm. father. Um, I have expectations of my kid. <laughs> and um, same thing with Monkey King. He sees his kid kind of being a little rebellious and kind of acting a lot like he did when he was little and he doesn't like it because those were mistakes that he made. But he's also caught between the idea of like, do you allow him to grow and make those mistakes and learn from it, mm -hmm. or do you try to control his growth, right? And so I think those are really, you know, realistic ideas that we are dealing with as parents nowadays. Do you helicopter or do you not? You yeah. Know? And so I could really relate to that, and I really wanted to play that version of Monkey King. Cool. 
cool. Now I'm imagining the rest of your career just like every 10 years, Monkey King, slightly more senior, Monkey King, slightly more senior, like until you're grandpa, old Grandpa, Grandpa <laughs> Monkey King. Grandpa yes. King, yeah. Yes, with lots of monkey grandchildren, yes. Oh my gosh. You are such a multidisciplinary physical actor. Mm -hmm. So for anybody who wants to get into performing or maybe stunt work, what's your best piece of advice for them? Uh, I would start picking by picking up a martial art or um, maybe gymnastics, but mm -hmm. learning how to move because really, a lot of people think that uh, being a good screen fighter means you have to be an expert in martial arts, but it's actually not true. You should have to be a good mover. Mm. So it doesn't mean if you're good in martial arts, you can be a good screen fighter. You have to be able to understand movement and how it looks on screen and using your body to paint a picture. And so um, if you can get that idea by practicing and understanding your body, uh, whether it's martial arts or any other kind of um, sport that is about body control, you will be, have a good advantage uh, over everybody else. And then last but not least, because here in the Pop First, we celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics. What are you geeking out about right now that you're uh, not working on? Yeah, well, I'm geeking out over Andor right now because yes. I'm watching with my daughter. Uh, we watch everything Star Wars. We're both star huge Star Wars fans. And this is like the best time of my life that we can watch stuff together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really enjoying like going over the old stuff with her, mm -hmm. but then also watching the new stuff and then, and then geeking about it. We both geek out about it and get really excited about it. Daniel Wu, the OG American born Chinese Monkey King, thank you so much for joining us here thank in New York you. Comic Con. Thank you.